Hi, my name is Mark Peters. I'm a paediatric intensivist from Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, and I had the privilege of being one of the team that helped coordinate the development of the Surviving Sepsis Campaign International Guidelines for the Manager of Septic Shock and Sepsis Associated Organ Dysfunction in Children. Um, this video is because we've now written a short postscript um, uh, reflecting on that guidance in the era of COVID-19. Uh, and the intention of this um, postscript was to help colleagues around the world by providing a view from the team of experience intensivists on several key issues where you may wish to focus your attention. We felt some comment was um, important for two reasons. Um, firstly, we wanted to emphasise that the spectrum of disease produced by the SARS-CoV-2 virus in children almost certainly has more in common with other causes of septic shock and sepsis-associated organ dysfunction than you might appreciate from much of the early literature, which really focused on the differences um, from this uh, pathogen um, and others. And the second is to remind everybody that the risk to children from normal sepsis, from normal organisms that could occur at any time, um, still dwarfs that from COVID-19. So as for most aspects of clinical medicine, um, the key in this context is almost certainly attention to the basics of clinical care. Um, and this is especially true, of course, for um, the interventions for which we have good supporting evidence or consensus in clinical practice, as we try to summarize in our surviving sepsis campaign guidance. So how might um, a reader respond to our, our piece and take action? Well, we would suggest there's a couple of priorities. Firstly, um, to implement or to review the implementation of our recommendation for systematic screening for timely recognition of sepsis and septic shock yeah. or other sepsis associated organ dysfunction in children. Um, this may be especially important in the context when um, we have unfamiliar staff or uh, uh, levels of stress um, that are unfamiliar when a child presents with fever um, and shock in the context of the pandemic. There's also obviously a requirement for us to pay increased attention to infection control measures and the use of personal protective equipment. Um, and finally, uh, to reinforce with your teams that the initial steps of septic shock man management are not changed by the presence of the pandemic. And as in our algorithm, there are six elements to this. Um, very quickly to review them, we're we'll recommending rapid um, intravenous or intraosseous access to collect blood cultures, to start broad spectrum antibiotics, to measure serum lactate if possible, and then two conditional steps, which is to administer fluid bolus resuscitation if shock is present, and to start vasoactive drugs if shock persists. And obviously the detail of those last two will be very dependent on the setting in which you're working. Obviously you're keen that we avoid hypoxia and promptly treat hypoglycemia if it's present and as a different emphasis from previous guidelines is we encourage careful assessment of myocardial contractility wherever possible. So in summary, COVID-19 probably has more in common with other forms of sepsis than we appreciate 